So next we have the nephron loop, or loop of Henle. That's a common name. You should definitely know both. And remember that the nephron loop first descends into the medulla, so that's the descending limb. So it goes from the cortex to the medulla, and then it ends up doing a U-turn right here. That's why it's called the nephron loop. And then it has the ascending limb. Now what happens is that the descending limb and the ascending limb, is it different just based on the direction? It's actually very different based on what it actually transports out of the, of the inside of the renal tubule compared to its surrounding. So what we see here is this number, this 300 milliosmoles per liter. So osmoles refer to the moles or the how much of a substance is contributing or dissolved in the fluid that contributes to osmosis. That's kind of like a rough definition of osmoles. So or another way to think of it is just how concentrated something is. So what we notice as we go through the renal tubule is that as, as we go from the descending limb from where we exited the PCT and go down into the loop right or the the U-turn right here, is that it gets more and more and more concentrated. Now this is a very interesting thing. This surrounding area also gets more and more concentrated. And the way I like to think of it is that it gets, or another way to think of it simply, this number is how salty that fluid or surrounding area is. Now, remember osmosis. Osmosis is key. If you really understand osmosis well, this is going to help you I mean, you can memorize this just as is, but I, in my opinion, if you have a solid understanding of osmosis, all the pieces fall into place. So what we have here is that it's getting saltier and saltier and saltier. But as you go from a saltier to sal what happens with the, when you have a solution that's less salty and a solution that's more salty? Which way is the liquid going to go? It's going to go toward the area that's more sal salty, right? So notice that this liquid, when this, this fluid inside the renal tubules, when it starts out up here, it's actually not that salty compared to down here. So as this fluid starts to descend, all the water starts to get, uh, to get transported from the inside of the tubule to the surrounding interstitial fluid and capillaries of the renal medulla. So that's what happens here. Osmosis is drawing out this water from the descending limb and what happens to the to the concentration and salt concentration inside the descending limb? Well, think of it this way. What happens when you have a soup and start letting it boil and all the water starts leaving the soup the longer you let it boil on the stove? It gets more and more concentrated, right? Same thing is happening here in the descending limb. As water is being sucked out of the renal tubule via osmosis, this is also going to concentrate the salt concentration and solute concentration inside the renal tubule. This is why even though the renal medulla is very salty, as it draws out water, it's going to make the inside of the renal tubule saltier. Now we're down here deep in the renal medulla. Now we're going to ascend outside of it. So what's going to happen is that it's very interesting. This part osmosis is occurring and this membrane right here is permeable to water. But over here, now water can't be transported and there's no more osmosis. So what we have here are these little transporters and they actually transport and pump out salt from that fluid inside the renal tubule. So that's what's happening there. So these little transporters, what they're doing is taking solutes, especially sodium chloride. There's also urea transporters as well, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to be just talking about salt, um, sodium chloride here. So what we have are these transporters actively pumping out all these little dots right here, which are sodium chloride particles and ions, outside from the or from the renal tubules into the surrounding medulla. So what I like to think of it is that the renal medulla is very very salty, and why is it very salty? Well, because you're not only concentrating the you're not only concentrating all the ions inside here, inside the tubule, but you're also pumping those concentrated ions back into the medulla itself. Now, this is a very interesting thing. The saltier it gets in the medulla, the more water it's going to draw out from the ascending limb, the, or the descending limb. So yeah, the saltier the medulla, the more water it's going to draw out here in the descending limb, 
And the more water you draw out, the more ions you have to play with, the more ions you pump, ions you have here in the renal tubule, the more sodium chloride you can dump out and pump out inside the renal medulla. So it's kind of like building upon each other. And this is a concept we call the counter current multiplier. So yeah, this is one thing. So this is what this is just a general way I think to think of it. The renal medulla is very salty, and this is driving the osmosis that helps to reclaim water from the the urine that's forming in the renal tubule. And if you didn't have this, well, what would happen? The, all the water that's in your renal tubule, if you didn't have a very salty medulla that helps helps to reabsorb all this water from the descending limb of the nephron loop then you would lose a lot of water every time you urinate. So the increased salt, this is the whole purpose of it. And it helps to create an osmotic gradient. So basically a big difference in the solute concentration in the, between the renal tubules and the surrounding fluid that helps to suck water out back from, and reclaim water from the renal tubule. And this is another thing to keep in mind. So this is another picture showing that we have our efferent arterial, but it doesn't just go back straight to the body. What happens is that the efferent arterial ends up in these peritubular capillaries and the vasa recta. But what I'm getting at here is that you have all these, this network of capillaries and blood vessels that are ready to reclaim anything that's being reabsorbed from the tubule. So that's why it's very important to kind of know that the, these vessels exist because they have to be end up somewhere in the body, right? Okay, so the peritubular capillaries, these surrounding the P, these surround the PCT and DCT, whereas the vasa recta refers to the capillaries that surround the nephron loop. Okay, so again, this is a very important concept. Not only do you have the reabsorption of water, but you have all these capillaries that are right there to reclaim that water that's being reabsorbed from the renal tubule. So that's what we have here with the vasa recta. And then over here, we have, again, the sodium chloride is also being reabsorbed. So it's not just about reabsorbing the water, it's also about reabsorbing the ions. So if you didn't reabsorb the ions, where would the ions end up? They would end up in the collecting system and out in your urine. So this is in the way your body is, your, your kidneys are important not only in forming urine, but also reclaiming things so that everything it needs for homeostasis and maintaining your blood chemistry doesn't all end up into your, in your urine. Yeah, so that's what we have here. So again, the, the vasa recta, the peritubular capillaries, they run alongside the renal tubule. All right, so then the nephron loop, so there are those two main sections, the descending and ascending limb. The descending limb, it reabsorbs water via osmosis. Why? Because the renal medulla is very salty. It has a lot of sodium chloride and also urea as well. Like urea, it is a waste product of um, nitrogen metabolism, but it's also an ion that contributes to osmosis as well. So that's the interesting thing. Like. Your kidneys not only have a lot of like salt and sodium chloride, they also have a lot of urea. And the ascending limb, you have reabsorption of sodium and chloride, and this is an active transport that's pumping out sodium and chloride ions from the inside of the renal tubule to the surrounding tissues and capillaries. And secretion, yeah, you also have urea being secreted into the, so that's the interesting thing about urea. It's always being constantly adjusted throughout the nephron and the kidney. So it is being secreted in the descending limb, but I think this is the more important part. The nephron loop is very important in terms of reabsorbing water and salts from the flu tubular fluid and back into your bloodstream.